Hi folks, thanks for joining me again on Ancient Origins Facebook Live in our Friday segment. So, I'm here on the December solstice, which traditionally in the Northern Hemisphere was celebrated as the day of least light. But here in the South, in Colombia, it's the longest day of the year. This is actually the summer solstice, so the astronomy is reversed. But what I'm about to do is concurrent whether you're in the North or the South. What we're going to do is ask a question. How did ancient cultures look up at the swirling cauldron of the sky with all these apparently random lights, stars, moons and galaxies and systemize it? Because they certainly did systemize it. We like to project complexity onto the past. Because we don't understand astronomical terms and software, we assume that people in the past must have had some kind of great ancient knowledge or some kind of lost um, secrets, if you like. But they really didn't. The way ancient solar temples were laid out was with ropes and poles. It's this simple, guys. Once an area had been chosen for a new solar temple, they need only insert a staff, otherwise known as a gnomon, a shadow caster. Now in all world mythologies and religions, we see Moses striking a staff at Kadesh Barnea causing water. Uh, Manco Capac and Mamakija, the founders of the Inca religion, or the Inca civilization rather, traveled with a golden staff from Lake Titicaca to Cuzco jammed it into Cusco and founded the Inca Empire. And of course, Odin, Norse religion and Norse cosmology, founded civilization with his staff. So, the staff, every day, at midday, when the sun's at its highest point in its meridian, casts a shadow perfectly north and south. The designers, the ancient architects, need only have roped north and south on their meridian. And they had the beginnings of a solar chronometer. The next step was to bisect a right angle, establishing the east and west alignments. Now, of course, then, later in the next year, when the, um, the vernal and the autumnal equinoxes occurred, this measurement could have been trued up to account for the mountains and all the vis visual obstacles on the horizon. Because, of course, to astronomers in observatories, where the sun rose on the horizon was important. Where it was first seen was of little interest. However, within religious systems and cosmologies, it was where the sun was seen first appearing, the actual first light of the sun was seen. Now, that might have been two hours after rise on the horizon. So, these things could have been finited and trued up on the actual astronomical days concerned. So, we have a solar cross, coordinated with north, south, and east and west. We have a compass. On the important day, this morning, I'd need only take a second staff and backside across the centre of the temple to the point in the horizon where I saw the solstice sun rising. And I relay it with a rope. In the evening, I take another backside across the centre of my temple and I rope out the setting point of the winter or the summer solstice sun. And what I essentially end up with is a star with eight points. The solar cross with a cross shape or a lozenge shape inserted which represents the solstices. A temple designer need only take wooden frames and align the wooden frames with either the north, south, east and west or with the solstices, so he'd have his temple facing directly to the rising in the solstice sun, setting suns, or he could have had it aligned to the cardinal points with maybe windows cut here to allow the light of the setting and rising solstice suns to pour into the temple, illuminating a central object or an offering, generally gold in the south, right at the center of the temple. Now, here's the magic. How on earth would ancient astronomer priests have systemized this in the simplest, easiest, condensed, understandable package. Well, this is how they did it. If you pull out your north, south and east and west, you're left with what's called a solstice triangle. Here we have the solstice angles of the location we are at. Now if we move further towards the equator, 
this is going to become a flatter angle and eventually flat horizontal on the equator if we move towards the pole the poles they're going to become more elongated and pointed so here in Colombia the actual setting point of the Sun today in the winter solstice the rising point rather is 113 degrees come and have a look at this let's go and meet Chia my doggy Chia come here and say hi to the ancient origins folks girl and show them your secret last weekend I went to an indigenous Moiska textile designer and bought this for my dog show it girl see that right there we have what's known as the Andean cross that there on my dog's neck is made up of lozenge shapes diamonds that are 113 degrees perfectly matching the setting and rising angles of the solstice sun here in Colombia at the latitude the observation was made so in the textiles the cosmology the imagery the geometries on the potteries and the um, manufactured good of the Moiskas and further south down to Peru, that angle changes slightly. So, in shape, design, proportion, scale and ratio, all of the secrets on how to delineate, align and orient a solar temple are enshrined. Till next Friday guys, over and out.